Hi everyone! We've already had a spiral tunnel, a circular tunnel, and a triangular tunnel. How about trying a square or rectangular one this time, which could resemble a classic dungeon style game? It's pretty simple, so let's get to it. You might be wondering why I'm adding yet another tunnel to all the ones I've already published and what new things it will actually bring. It's true that the most basic principle probably hasn't changed much, but there will still be something original here. Besides the fact that the code is quite a bit shorter and simpler this time, we can easily modify it for shapes other than rectangles in the final effect. We'll see that for ourselves in a moment as we write the code. So let's start by creating a new scene into which we'll add the usual correct and set its dimensions to Full HD. Right clicking on the scene, create new scene and let's call it a square tunnel. Okay, very well. And I think we can use it as a user interface and right clicking adding the child node correct and as i said we'll set uh, its dimensions to full hd but first i'll change the color to black and in the layout transform let's set 1920 by 1080 okay and uh, scrolling down to the material section creating a new shader material click new shader and it's called square tunnel gd shader of the canvas item type let's put it to the shaders folder create and clicking again to open it in the shader editor okay and as usual i'll delete everything unnecessary from this template so that only the fragment function remains deleting vertex and deleting the commented out light great so, as usual, I'll start by adding the uniform parameters. We need a total of four. The resolution for the aspect ratio adjustment, a texture for the tunnel walls, the camera movement speed, and something like the stretching of the texture on the walls. It will look like this. A uniform vec2 resolution and with the initial value of the dimensions of our rectangle, which is uh, 1920 and 1080. Okay, that's the first one. Now, the texture uniform sampler 2D, let's call it tax and give it repeat <coughs> enable uh, switch and hint default black. Okay, repeat enable is logical because we want the tunnel to stretch indefinitely and in default black so we can display at least a black color before we assign a real texture to it. Okay, the third one, as I said, would be the motion speed. So it is a uniform float speed with a hint range and the initial value, let's say 0.1 and put, let's put the range from 0 to 1 and the step point 0, 1. Okay, and the final one is the stretch value, uniform float stretch with another in range and let's start at point 2. And this time we'll make it from point 0, 1 to 1 and the step is again point 0, 1. Great, let's proceed with the fragment function. I will add what I include almost every time, shifting the coordinate origin to the center, adjusting the aspect ratio and the time variable using the internal time and the set speed. So let's do it right here in the fragment function, deleting the comment and now vec2 uv is uv minus 0.5, so we are moving the uh, center of uh, coordinates to the center of the screen and aspect ratio uvx is multiplied by resolution x divided by resolution y, the usual formula, and finally the time variable float time is internal time 
times speed. Great. So far, we don't see anything special, so let's add the lines for reading from the texture and displaying the result. So I'll continue. Uh, VEX3 color is texture function applied on the text texture and UV coordinates. And we know that the texture function returns a vector 4, but we are working with vector 3 color RGB. So let's use only the RGB components. And finally, uh, internal color, the output is vector 4 that is composed of our color vector 3 and 1 for the alpha value. Okay, we still don't see anything special because we haven't added a texture yet. So uh, the default black color is being displayed. The texture I use represents a brick wall and belongs to a free material I downloaded from somewhere. So now I'll drag it in the text parameter. Let's find it in the inspector, shader parameters, text, here it is. And I think it's somewhere here in textures. Yeah, where I'd break albedo, that should be it. Okay, let's take a look. So finally, we can see something. I'll just add that I only use the albedo texture from the whole material, that is, the image without any enhancements like normal maps and such, so we won't be dealing with the things like the indentations between bricks and mortar, or the bumps on the brick surfaces. In this tutorial, we'll simply be displaying the texture on the tunnel walls, and now we are finally getting to that. As we know, the tunnel will be rendered around the coordinates origin, which we've shifted to the center, so it'll be useful to convert to polar coordinates like this. Okay, scrolling back to the fragment function, and I think we should do it here before we assign the final color. So let's do the polar coordinates. Float theta is, as we know, a ton of UVX and uh, UVY. So this is the angle in the polar coordinates. And now we need to define the shape of our tunnel. Since we'll be experimenting with different shapes, it would be a good idea to isolate this code into a separate function. So I'll add a function called getShape and I'll implement it to return a rectangle, that is, the maximum value of the x and y coordinates of the absolute value of the UV vector. It's a formula we've already used in several previous shaders. So let's scroll up and put it, for example, here. I think I can expand this panel a little bit. And now uh, float, get shape with the parameter back to UV coordinates of the current pixel. And as I said, it will return the maximum of the components of the absolute value. So UV, let's first make an absolute value out of that and return, yes, <laughs> return max of UVX and UVY. Okay, this is the function, and of course we have to use it in the fragment function. So let's add a call to this function for the current pixel. Right here, after the theta value, float shape is get shape of the UV coordinates. So we have the shape and we have the angle in the polar coordinates. What's left is to use both to find a new pixel on the brick texture, which will be transformed in a way that makes the result resemble texture mapping onto a tunnel. We achieve this with this following simple calculation. Uh, vector, let's call it P as a point, is vector of stretch value divided by the shape value and theta. Okay, that's it. And now, when we uh, replace UV with P in the following line, we'll get the expected result. Let's try it out. Okay, and here we go. Let's just show all of that. 
This is quite a good foundation for the tunnel. However, we are definitely not done yet. For example, we would want the light to fade with the distance and for the end of the tunnel to disappear into the darkness. How can we achieve that? We know that the value of the get shape function, uh, this one, value of the get shape function is zero at the center where we've shifted the coordinate origin and gradually increases towards the walls. So it will be enough to multiply the resulting color by this value. So the pixels near the center will be significantly darkened like this. Let's go back, scroll down to the fragment function and right after the color definition, let's do what I just said. Color is multiplied by the shape value. Wait for it. Great. It's starting to look more like a tunnel. However, there is a small issue with the texture, which probably isn't perfectly mapped. As we can notice, for example, here at the top right, if I just in uh, zoom in, we can see it here, for instance, the bricks look like uh, they are broken between the wall and the ceiling. So we'll need to adjust the mapping to polar coordinates using multiples of pi, because as we know, the angle of a full circle is twice the value of pi. Let's try the first, uh, let's try first <coughs> dividing theta by this value. So where is it here? Theta is divided by pi. Okay, the result, let's just show all of that. The result looks a bit better, but the broken bricks haven't disappeared. In fact, it seems they have appeared in more places like this everywhere. Uh, so uh, it's important to mention that the ideal form of this code it depends on the chosen texture because bricks likely create a different impression than, for example, a rock wall or a steel structure. So what have worked for me is multiplying the result by two. And here we go. I think it's fine now. And it's time to make our tunnel move a bit. So let's add the time value to the calculation. Okay, so uh, where we have it, stretch divided by shape and let's add plus time. Wait, okay, we are done. We can try adjusting the speed or set a different stretch. So I'll find it in the inspector and for example, let's make it faster, very fast or put it to the full stop. And what happens if we change the stretch? We can see how it affects the structure of the tunnel. So we can simulate a very fast speed, for example, like this. Looks nice. Let's return to the default values. And what's left? I promised some experiments with the shape of the tunnel, right? So let's see what happens if we replace, for example, in the get shape function, this one, if we replace the max function with the length function. Something tells me that the result will be more circular. Okay, and uh, unlike max, the length requires only one parameter, the UV vector. So let's change it to length and delete this, replace it by UV, wait for it. That's indeed the case, it's circular, which isn't a big surprise because the length function is directly related to circles, something we've used many times, for example, when modeling analog clocks. And what if we wanted a tilted square as the shape of the tunnel? For that, we just need to return the sum of both components. Okay, so instead of length uv, I will use this uvx plus uvy. Wait, okay, that's nice, right? But it appears that the tunnel is somewhat overexposed, it's brighter, which is a common result of color addition. So it should be enough to normalize the result, that is, divided by the number of additions, in this case, by two. So let's put it to brackets and divide by two. Looks okay. 
Okay, and to wrap things up, let's try to, uh, combining two shapes. For example, we'll create a square with rounded corners. It will be a mix between the max and length function, with the weighting factor set in favor of the square, like this. So I'll just delete that and use, as I said, the mix function, which is a mix between the max uvx and uvy. This is the square. And the second parameter would be the circle. So length of uv and the weight factor. I said it would be put in favor of the square. So let's make it close, closer to 0 than 1, for example, 0.3 weight yeah can you see it it is a bent like circular but it also resembles the square that should be probably enough there is certain uh, certainly plenty of room for experiment experimentation here thank you very much for watching effects like this can uh, definitely find their use even if it's just for stylish transitions between different levels of our game. What matters is that this is another example of applying simple principles and combining them, which is actually one of the main goals of these tutorials. In any case, uh, thanks again, take care, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.